Hey there, this is me, Jane, and just want to say welcome. And I'd like to share with you today about a movie I went to see. I went to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And first of all, did you know that Spider-Man has had a Mandela change? Um, for me, I remember it all spelled out in one word, like all the comic books spelled Spider-Man. But now, all the books and all the movies have it printed with a hyphen. So it's like S-P-I-D-E-R hyphen M-A-N. So me and my little family, um, we went to the movie totally unaware that it was going to be about the Mandela effect without calling it that. I was, I just couldn't believe it, you guys. The plot is they have a particle accelerator, accelerator, but it's not called CERN in the movie. And the accelerator makes it possible to access different universes in live time. So in one universe, the one in which the movie takes place, Spider-Man dies. So the goal in the movie is to go to another universe where Spider-Man's alive and well and bring him back to the other one where he died. So I was thinking about this and I just had another Mandela um, change. Um, I didn't realize that it had happened, but um, do you remember Doris Day? She sang the song, um, Que Sera Sera. It was one of my mother's favorite songs. But it turns, I remember her um, dying when she was 50, in her 50s, I thought. But now, in April, she's going to be turning 95. And there was a lot to her story. There was a real, it was just a real kind of tragic thing with her husband. He'd... Um, siphoned all of her money off. He was her manager and he took it all and anyway she had a really sad life. But now she didn't have a sad life. Um, she is alive and well and and happy and has a partner and anyway. So and then I remember Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka, dying right after his wife Gilda died. And he live to be an old man. So it's just like this movie. Um, in this movie, they're all, there's, there's a bunch of different types of Spider-Man from multiple universes, which they've managed to pull into their own. And so, you know, after seeing this movie, it was as if the world had admitted to everything about the Mandela effect, what all of us have been postulating about. This movie eerily has staged what we've been experiencing. Producers, artists, writers are scripting movies that are aware of the particle accelerator and the strange changes that are taking place. They made a kid-friendly Pixar movie about it all. So... Maybe people aren't so blind after all. Maybe a lot more people than we think see the changes, but many just ignore them because they don't know how to deal with them. Um, I was wondering if this movie could be a test too, to see how the, the, how the movie does. Um, a lot of us are aware of pre-programming too, and how are they just trying to make it norm? in our world so that everyone accepts more and more intense changes that are going to happen in our future. Um, another thing I was thinking about too that I wanted to see what you guys thought about this is um, Spider-Man is the hero in this movie and CERN created the World Wide Web. Then I, I looked up in the Webster's Definition Dictionary for, um, for web as a noun, and it said it was this, a network of fine threads constructed by a spider from fluid secreted by its spinnerets, 
used to catch its prey. Spider-Man becomes part spider and is also able to secrete and spin webs and uses them to catch his targets. So I was just putting these things together and I was wondering if everything is connected, just like the network of fine threads, are they messing with matter at a quantum level and reconnecting atoms to change reality from how it was? So what does any of this have to do with our lives as a lover of Jesus? Well, Heavenly Father has a reason for allowing these changes to happen. He is rocking the world so that those who have been clinging so tightly to it will look towards him. He doesn't want any of his children to be away from his presence for all eternity. So he does everything he can to try to make us understand that we need to turn our will and our lives over to him. What is going to wake the world up? I have a feeling that the changes that we've seen in our world is just the tip of the iceberg. That this is just the beginning of more lying signs and wonders. As knowledge increases more and more, and the AIs are running at a trillion times trillion faster each day, I believe that the changes that are going to occur will happen constantly within the twinkling of an eye. It's very troublesome to me that some people do not see any changes happening. Do they get so locked into the pattern of their lives? Like they get up, go to work, go home from work, eat dinner, clean the house a bit, put the kids to bed, and watch TV until it's time to go to sleep. And then they get up the next day and they do the same thing over and over again. Are they hypnotized to just see their routine and don't know how to ever look out beyond it to things that are happening outside the pattern? What do you think? Do you have some thoughts on why some people do not see any changes? I'd really love to hear them. And I'm also trying to collect personal stories of strange changes in our lives and to compare them. I'm trying to find links. If you would like to share those also, please comment below or you can write me at jane.is.sane.end.searching at gmail.com. And I'd also thank you for to anyone who responded to the last video regarding the computer games I'd purchased and those titles changing. It was really hard, <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys talking about it. Sorry for the break here. I know my voice probably sounds different, but I had to redo the end of this video. Somehow it just disappeared, and I've been having a really hard time with it, but I, I'm going to give it a go right now. I've received some really interesting emails and testimonies from brothers and sisters who have been having strange things happen to them. And so I've asked permission and I'm going to tell the story of two dear brothers. And the first one writes and he's talking about how he is having just some strange things happen. He talks about how he really is, uh, he loves the Lord with all of his heart. And he was finished he finished two days of fasting, and then things just started happening. He, he says, I'm going to read from his letter, For a while I have noticed odd bumps in the night in the old place I live. Not really bumps, but rather like creatures walking on the roof sound. Last night I again heard the sounds moving inside. They were in my room, and then they were moving on the bed beside me. My heart beat so fast. I was shuddering. He states that he's never been into the occult because I know that um, sometimes that can open up doors for people to have demonic attacks and things like that. But he says he's been very careful with that. And he hasn't been into any of the demonic zones to open those doors. So I'm going to continue reading. I pray for knowledge. I work at carpentry. And I live in the Rocky Mountains, far from most temptations. 
So this is all very new to me. I am a vet, and I've slept like a baby where men fear to go. Yet this thing had me petrified. It left, and then I stayed in bed and I just prayed. I was afraid I was imagining it, and afraid I wasn't. Um, I have to talk about how I've had the same thing in our household, have had this happen, and I believe it's a spiritual attack, just the enemy trying to scare us and give us fear, but I believe that we are protected by Heavenly Father, just as Job was. Job was, Satan had to go to him and say, you put a hedge around them, take it away and let me attack them. So I, I believe that they're going to try to to get us, but I really think, Father, he protects us. Okay, so I'm going to continue on here. I know this isn't really a Mandela change, but my point is that I strongly believe that evil is now literally walking among us rather than walking in the night outside our doors. So I totally agree. I really believe that the enemy has stepped up his totally his his war against us. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time and I believe that he it, he's the one that's doing the lying signs and wonders as spoken of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I believe that this all these changes, everything that's happening, if you want to call it the Mandela effect, but I think rightly we should be calling it the lying signs and wonders of the time before the Antichrist will be revealed. And he's going to be coming with all these lying signs, power, and wonder, it says. So, okay, I'm going to continue on. There's some very, there's some more interesting things that he has to say. I had to actually take a mirror to the dump because it made so many noises in the night. Creaking and a plastic like crunching and creaking. Crazy, right? I wrote on the mirror, evil inside, no kidding just to stop someone from adopting the attractive mirror. But sure enough, someone adopted it. In about a week, it was back at the dump, broken. The words I wrote, gone. With these things that are happening, I think I like to think I can handle it. I know without prayer, I probably wouldn't be able to. Things are ramping up in the realm of evil, I have no doubt. I see changes in our Bibles and in the world. I belong to Jesus, and I have not tried to practice any besetting sin. I'm praying a lot more. I'm not, on, I'm not medicated or on any drugs. I'm a man in the last days, and I adore Jesus. So I totally believe you, brother, and I know that these things are happening left and right to a lot of us. Some people, they, I don't think that they can handle seeing so that they may see many things happening and changing and strange things but they just they have to have some type of soothing and so they deny it and they say they don't see those things so i just want to thank you so much for sending that in and for sharing it with the other people our brothers and sisters here and then i have another one um from a, another dear brother that was so kind to let us use his also his testimony um, he wants to tell us a story about being a carpenter, okay, and a cabinet maker, and this has to do with his story. I have had several careers in my life. However, my lifetime occupation and skill is Finnish carpenter and cabinet maker. Seven or eight years ago, on a hot summer day, I was strolling through my hometown and decided to walk through a drugstore when I came to some steps and grabbed for the handrail with my left hand, I thought to myself, I like this handrail. So I took a moment to study its construction when I realized it was I who had built it back in the 80s and I'd simply forgotten about it. A year or so ago, I was with my sister and I wanted to show her my work. So we walked up to the same drugstore and I immediately noticed a completely different and more elaborate entrance to the building. I was just trying to tell myself, my sister, of the quantum changes. Of course, her rebuttal was that there must be a remodel. 
went inside and walking up the steps, the handrail I had built was not on the left side as it was, but it was now on the right hand side. While it's possible there may be, have been a remodel, the finished work I had completed decades ago could not have been duplicated complete with the years of wear marks. I have a lot more to share. And then he just, he's talking about just these things that we personally know of. We know that these things are happening and we can't deny them. Um, so I just want to thank you again for letting everybody know about your experiences. After talking with many of you, one common thread I have found amongst my dear Emmy family here on this channel is that most of us are isolated. Most do not have anyone in our common vicinity to talk to with regarding the changes. Another commonality is that most of us do not have family that see the changes. We are made to feel as if we've dropped in from another planet. Another similarity is that m most of us here are absolutely in love with Heavenly Father and He has wakened our souls and put an intense love in our heart for His Son, the Word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And we seem to have all just become more, more dedicated to Heavenly Father. And the more we're dedicated to Him and grow in Him and seek Him and talk to Him, the more He's revealing to us. I'd like to encourage you by speaking to your heart right now. I want to tell you that you are His remnant. You are blessed and be loved by our Father, the Creator of all. You are the ones, He says, that will keep the commandments of God and stand for the Word, who is Jesus Christ. Whenever fear may spring up because of a change or a trial or a difficult time in your life, remember, you are the remnant of the living and true God. When Satan brings a full frontal attack against you, with myriads of the fallen all fighting against you at once, remember who you are. You are the remnant. With one word, they will fall back in fear and trembling. That word is the word, Jesus. By the power of Jesus' name, they cannot stand against you. I'd like to end in prayer for each of you, if I may. Dearest, precious Father, I come to you through your Son, Jesus of Nazareth, and ask you to bless each person that hear these words. Father, please reveal to them what you meant when you called us your remnant. You said in the scriptures that your remnant is chosen by grace. Father, how humble it makes us that we were chosen by your grace to be your remnant here in these days. Please give us the strength to obey your commandments, even if the laws of this land change. Please help us to always obey you first, no matter what the cost, be it even death. Father, we ask that we will always have a boldness and not ever shy away from having a testimony about your son and what he did for us. Please give us an excitement and a passion for why we are believers in you and your son. Father, I ask for your beautiful Holy Spirit to be poured out upon my brothers and sisters here from your never-ending source of love. Let us operate in that beautiful spirit and not in our flesh. We ask this in Jesus' name, the Word of God.